us and, you know, getting Jake and Balin back. Jake and Balin, uh, them two dudes can play, and it's unfortunate that they've missed a lot of time. The positive is we were able to get a lot of work to some of those other guys, uh, really were able to come along. Like Mike Jones, Mike Jones is, Mike Jones ain't going away. Balin ain't going away. Jake ain't going away. So we got, we're going to have a lot of competition um, and, and creating some good depth there. And then same thing at the corner. Uh, I think, you know, the, the depth of our secondary, um, all those things will continue to be good competition for us. Has DK's absence allowed Sheridan Jones to, to push in for a, a possible starting spot? Uh, I, I think Mario and Sheridan, yeah. you know, those two guys have, have really, and then Booth is coming. You know, Booth is, Booth is one of those guys that's as advertised, uh, you know, kind of like AJ. It's just, he's got to put it all together, and it's just a matter of time before he does. Uh, but Mario and Sheridan have really stepped up, as has the Anthony. And you know, Anthony has, has done a nice job. Uh, so we, we've created really good depth there, and then you know, getting BK back, uh, I, think, I think that's going to be a good group for us as we go through the season of strength, definitely. Is Mario? Mario? Coach Brooks, uh, and I saw he was at the scrimmage on Thursday. Did you share any insight with what he saw? No, I just talked to him before before practice. I didn't get a chance to see him afterwards, but you know he, he wouldn't get to me anyway unless I just asked him. Uh, you know he's it's just how he is. But he was excited. I think the only guy left that he coached was Niles. Yeah. Uh, so you know he, he was kind of learning and watching some of those young guys. And always good to see Dan when he comes through. He's getting ready to be a granddad. And so uh, we miss him every day. Uh, certainly a part of our family still. Is Mario more of a boundary guy? He played the side. He played the side. And that's another thing that we've done a good job of. I think Mike's done a great job of uh, teaching those guys both sides. You know, so they really have all been learning both sides. Uh, you know, just trying not to be left-handed or right-handed to really be be able to play, uh, you know, boundary on field. And I think they all can do that. With so many young guys, how do you feel like the chemistry is building with this side? It's been good. That's, that's, as I said at the very beginning, that was our biggest challenge. You know, I think the rest will take care of itself, but I think the biggest thing for us was really developing the chemistry that you have to have to be a good team. And uh, and that's that's the process we've been going through. That's what camp's all about. And these guys have been great. We've had some really we've had some really good meetings and some uh, you know really uh, good opportunities to share with each other and, and for this team to grow closer. Uh, today is a, is a part of it. We'll have a lot of fun today, but you know, it's been it'll be three weeks this Wednesday that we've been kind of together every day. And our camp is set up to develop that. I mean, because it's all it's all day we're together. And you eat together and you, you, you sweat together and you meet together. And I mean, there's just a lot of time uh, to spend with each other. I mean, but just not just spending time with, with each other, making quality time, making sure that they get to know each other. You know, other than, hey, this guy plays left tackle. Uh, who's the person? So I, I feel really good about the chemistry. I think I think the leaders have done an amazing job with this group. Uh, everybody you know, that's been around here, they, they have bought in and led, and they understand what we're trying to do. And they all recognize, too, you got, you know, 40-plus new people that are roaming around. They understand why we have to do what we do. And, uh, and so they've led the way. So it's not just been me having to, to lead that. So I'm, I'm pleased. I think the chemistry's in a, in a good place right now. I know last week you said Frank Gladson was dealing with an injury. How's he doing right now? He's good. He's good. He's just kind of going through his process. And, and uh, he's back running. And, you know, hopefully he'll be back sooner or later. Hope, hopefully he's here for the first game. But if, if not, I, I I can't imagine he wouldn't be ready for the a game. You've been asked about Davis on? Uh, Davis was not back today as far as um, – and I didn't get to see him because all the freshmen had to go to their, their uh, all the summer enrollees had to go to the <coughs> whatever the thing on campus. Yeah, yeah, they had to do all that. Uh, so, so they were there today. But he, he hopefully we can get a little bit more about him tomorrow and see where he is. What are some of the pros about being ranked number one in both balls and coming off the best season in school history? Kind of momentum you have, and are there any cons to it? Um, pros to being ranked number one in the preseason. Um. I mean, I guess that means that people think we got a good team coming back, and that probably means that we were a good team last year. So, I mean, I guess that's a pro. I guess that beats not being ranked at all because everybody thinks you stink. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the pro. Uh, the con is 
it just doesn't matter. I mean, it just is a distraction to for people to ask me questions about it because it just doesn't matter. Uh, like I said, unless they bring us a trophy and tear the concrete out over there and put the preseason champs up there, I don't think we're going to do that. <laughs> so it just doesn't matter. That's probably the only con is it just creates conversation that's unnecessary because it's just not worth the paper it's printed on. And all you got to do if you really want history is just take the last 10 years preseason polls and, and a lot of those teams in the top five don't even finish ranked. Uh, a lot of the teams in the top 10 don't even finish in the top 25. So, you know, so I, I just I just have a perspective of it. And I've been on the other side of it where we haven't been ranked in the top 25 and we finished ranked. Uh, so I think we've got a heck of a streak going, though. I think we finished, I think we have finished higher than our preseason ranking, like, I don't know, a bunch eight, of years in a row. Eight. Eight years in a row. It ended. So. Yeah, that's ended now. <laughs> Now you have to well, we could keep from zero. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? You gotta have a master. I mean, can't we can't we finish like you know, negative? It would be zero. It would be zero. That's the next one, right? Then it gets to negative one. Super duper one. Super duper. Uh, so I don't know. So maybe we could tie it. You know, or you have to change the rhetoric. Yeah, we have to change that one. Yeah, Ross, Ross will figure something out. I'm sure. Are you, are you, are you concerned about your uh, scoreless streak in the fourth quarter? <laughs> Say that again? If I score in the streak. Yeah, y'all haven't scored in the fourth quarter of the last two games. Oh, we haven't? <laughs> it's probably been more by choice than anything. Like <laughs> no, I'm not concerned about that. All good? Thanks, All right, appreciate it.